Hello and welcome to CNET's The Fix. The show about DIY tech and how-tos. I'm Donald Bell. And I'm Sharon Propis. And in this episode, we're concentrating on the cloud, which is the best way you can access all of your data, no matter where you are. Yeah, and a lot of these services are very cost-effective. Most of them offer you increased storage. Eric Franklin's gonna show us our best options. The cloud isn't some complicated idea that only techies can understand. Despite its name, the cloud is simply the concept of storing and accessing your content over the internet as opposed to directly from your computer. That's it. So here are some of the best ways to store and access your files, folders, and media online for free. Google Drive is the one I use most, primarily for work, but also for personal docs and projects. Honestly, pretty much everything I type is at least in an untitled Google Drive document somewhere. Drive offers 15 gigabytes of free storage. Now, unfortunately, that's spread across all Google services, including Gmail. So if you send a large attachment, it counts against your storage. Now, just to be clear, this isn't a pure cloud storage option. It's more like online office, not to be confused with Microsoft's Office Online, of course. Drive's great, and you can pretty much store anything you want. But if you have a Google account, you already have access to it, so you likely have some experience with it. Now, if you want to just purely store data in the cloud, here are three services that are perfect for doing just that. Any files you copy into your sync folder will show up in your cloud drive, so you'll be able to access the file from anywhere. And even if you delete the sync files from your computer, you'll still be able to go to the internet and access them. Each of these services allow you to share files with anyone else through email, and each includes apps for both Android and iOS. If you're interested in getting an initial 10 gigabytes of storage for free, check out Box. The interface here is simple and appealing, but keep in mind that the problem with Box is that there's a 250 megabyte file size limit. Not very large if you're planning to store audio or video, though most picks will make it through just fine you can upgrade to a 100 gigabyte capacity and increase the minimum file size to five gigabytes. Now Microsoft's OneDrive is useful for both Windows and Mac users and it gives you an initial 15 gigabytes of storage capacity. It also supports up to two gigabyte file sizes. Also for every friend you get to sign up, you get an extra 500 megabytes of storage up to five gigabytes for a total of 20 gigabytes. If you sync OneDrive with your phone's camera, you also get an extra three gigabytes of storage. Now what's really cool is that if I download OneDrive to this computer, I can then go to another remote computer, log into my OneDrive account, and then access every file on this computer regardless of whether it was synced or not. Also, if you're willing to pay $2 per month, you get 100 gigabytes of storage, and for $4, you get a whopping 200 gigabytes. Pretty great deal if you need a lot of storage. Lastly, there's Dropbox. Now, this may be the most popular of the pure cloud storage services. Reason being, it supports the most platforms, including Linux and BlackBerry. Now, right off the bat, you only get two gigabytes of storage, but like OneDrive, each time you get a friend to join, you get an extra 500 megabytes of storage added up to a limit of 16 gigabytes. Also, by linking your account to social media sites like Facebook or Twitter, or setting up a mailbox account, you get an extra one gigabyte for each of those. Or enable the camera upload feature and get another three gigabytes. So although Dropbox storage starts low, you can easily increase it at no additional cost. And if you're using the app or desktop program, there's no file size limit. For about $10 per month, you can upgrade to Pro, which gives you 100 gigabytes of storage. For $20, you get 200 gigabytes. And for $50, you get 500 gigabytes. All these options are great for storing your data in the cloud. Overall, OneDrive has the best features and is the best bang for your buck. It's time for a quick break. But when we come back, we're gonna show you how you can set up your own personal cloud. Welcome back. You know, the more we use our tech, yeah. the more data we have to store. Like my iPhone, that always runs out of space because I take so many photos. Stop taking photos, It's the Sharon. selfies. No. It's true, though. The more photos we get, the more videos, the more files, we have to store them somewhere. But if you do it yourself, you can save some money. 
Cloud services like Dropbox and Google Drive are great if you don't have a lot of data to store. But if you have a larger media library and you don't want to pay a monthly subscription for cloud storage, the best solution is to create your own cloud. At the high end, you can create your own 16 terabyte NAS server that functions a lot like Dropbox. But it's really geared more towards the business professional and it can get really pricey. So instead, I'll show you how to set up a basic cloud for yourself. It'll let you download, share, and manage files just like you would on any other branded cloud storage service. You can expect to pay anywhere from about $150 to $250 for this type of setup. To get started, the first thing I'll do is plug in the MyCloud directly into my router. Then use Western Digital software to set up the device. I'll create a user account, and finally, my cloud is basically set up. So now, any files and folders I want in my cloud, I just drag and drop into here. Once I've got all of my files in there, some photos, and a video, I'm ready to access them from any other device. So in this case, on my Windows computer, it's as easy as launching the browser and signing into WD's portal online. Since this is a Windows computer, I'll actually browse my cloud using an Explorer window. There's my video, double click, and I'm streaming it over the web. I can even drag and drop files from this computer directly onto my cloud. To top it all off, there's an easy way to access all of your files from your smartphone using WD's app. Just like any other cloud platform, I can use it to view and stream any files I have in my cloud. Plus, I can use the app to back up and share photos I've taken on my phone. My cloud is by far the easiest and cheapest way to set up your own cloud. But remember that since it is a single volume, there's no insurance if your drive fails. So use the USB input on the back to plug in an external hard drive and back up your cloud just to be safe. If you like to take a lot of photos like Sharon does, you probably want a way to keep those organized and have them be accessible. Well, there are tons of sites out there that will do exactly that. But before you go signing up for one, there are some important things to consider. So here are some tips to help you get started and choose the best site that's right for you. I spent a good portion of my life trying to figure out the best way to store my photos. It all started with shoe boxes, and then it moved to hard drives, and then it all went to the cloud. Now we're lucky enough to live in a time where there's so many options when it comes to storing our photos online. But on the other hand, with so many options out there, how do you pick the right one? I'm going to give you some advice on choosing the right cloud photo storage solution that works for you. First off, you want to think long term. The reason so many companies offer you free storage for your photos is because they know how difficult it can be to switch services down the line. So you want to think about a company that's going to be around for the next 10, 20, 50 years. But if this is going to be my main backup for a lifetime of photos, I don't trust that these young guys won't go under in the next 10 years or be sold to another company. So that leaves us with the big boys. You got Google, Apple, Amazon, Microsoft, Yahoo, and to some extent Dropbox, though I have a hard time believing they won't get snatched up eventually. Let's boot out Apple and Amazon right off the bat. iCloud only works with Apple devices and it doesn't handle video, so boo. And then Amazon's cloud drive is just too basic, so let's go through the rest. Google's photo service is called Google Plus Photos. You get 15 gigs of free storage, though you have to share those gigabytes with your Gmail and your Google Drive. It also works with your browser or you can auto upload from the Android or iOS app. Now if you need more storage, you can pay for it up to 16 terabytes. Downside is it's tied to Google Plus, Google's answer to Facebook. You can set photos to private, but ultimately Google is dangling the service out there to get people to use their social network and share photos. More people, more photos, more stuff to sell ads around, which is really what Google's all about. For something a little more cut and dry, you can try Microsoft OneDrive, formerly Microsoft SkyDrive. It works with Android and iOS and also Windows and Windows Phone. It comes with 15 gigs of free storage, plus you can buy more. It's a clean layout and includes detailed information on your photos, including EXIF data. My only worry here is, as the recent name change implies, is that I don't feel Microsoft has totally ironed this thing out. I mean, Microsoft as a company is going to be around a long time, but I feel like maybe this time next year, Microsoft will call this thing Super Xbox Live Photos or something else. I mean, it's still a great solid option, especially if you're a Windows user or you have a Windows phone. But if you're not, there's some other options to explore. 
Next up, Dropbox. Almost identical to OneDrive, it's an online file locker with a very clean look and apps for every platform, including Windows. They have a mobile app called Carousel that does an excellent job of letting you quickly browse through your photo collection with a timeline bar at the bottom of the app. The downside here is that you only get five gigs of free storage before you have to start paying. Unlike Microsoft or Google, online storage is Dropbox's entire business and they don't make up the difference on online advertising. Finally, there's Flickr by Yahoo. In full disclosure, I've used Flickr for years, so I'm a little biased. It works on every platform, even Windows Phone. There are useful privacy controls. There's a huge community of users, and the best part is there's one terabyte of free storage. You'll get some ads, but a full terabyte should be enough to back up your average photo library. Also, video support is limited to one gigabyte per video, so you'll have to back up longer clips to YouTube or do the world a favor and shoot shorter vacation videos. So there you go, that's my best advice for where to go to store your photos in the cloud. Well, now you know, I'm a Flickr guy. And I don't blame you, one terabyte free is not a bad deal. That's hard to resist. All right, that's it for this week's show. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully by now you are a cloud expert. And if you want to reach out to us, I'm at Donald on Twitter. And I'm at Sharon Propus. Plus, there's an email, the fix at CNET.com, and that gets to all of us. Yep, and email us because we actually read the messages. It's true. Thanks for watching. Bye, guys.